Area Sanitation District Board Meeting. Roll call. Mr. Rett. Here. Robert's gone. Brian Briggs is here. 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 Anderson uh, here. Okay, and I'm here. Okay. Audience, we have Darcy Sullivan and Crystal Clancy. Any additions or deletions to the agenda today? So move to accept the agenda. Second. Seconded. Approval. Mike? Hello, yes. Yes? Yes. 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 No. And yes. Okay. Okay, minutes of the North Cooch Area Sand District Board for November 20, 2018. So move to approve. Motion by Don. Second. Second by Brian. Who was the second? Brian. Brian. Thank you. Discussion? Discussion. Call for a vote. Mike? I vote no. Yes? Yes. Oh. Um, how about yes? Okay. Yes. Yes. How about yes? And yes. Okay. How did I missed the last you Terry, you were yes? Yes. Bob? Everybody was except Mike. Okay. Thank you. All right. October East Cooch minutes for our information. Okay, disbursements. December disbursements of eighty-two thousand three hundred and eighty-two dollars and ninety-one cents, including blanket authorizations. So move to approve the disbursements. Don is first. Second. Mr. Bergman second. Um, I second it? Yeah. Yeah. Don Bergman. Any discussion? Mr. Chair, what, 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 what is the uh, the ones that have been paid previously? Do we have a record of those? They, they should be in there, Bob. The blankets. Like it. This one. This one, single page. Mm -hmm. Are we in discussion here? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know if there was anything out of the ordinary, any expenditures that aren't uh, typical monthly expenditures. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency lab certification renewal, that's one that's um, almost $1,600, but that is an annual thing, so it's 
it's not a normal monthly one, but it's a normal expense. Okay. And then um, annual fire extinguisher inspection. How many uh, extinguishers are they testing? There's quite a few of them. I don't know exactly the number. I have to look back, but there's 15, 20 of them. How many? There's about 15 of them. We got them in every building. No, and all the big, few all the big. All the ponds in one of the buildings. Yeah. And vehicles. Oh, and the other one that's atypical in here is uh, the biosolids. That bill is in here for that for this month. But again, that's a normal annual one. It's just not normal monthly. Some of that milky yeah. Yeah, electrical works. Oh, yeah. um, that is a uh, yeah. It's uh, for the drive at EQ. We had it. It was acting flaky and. Instead of replacing the entire drive, which was a couple of I mentioned that last time yeah. about that cassette board that was bad acting up. Yeah. Yeah. And when Milk Electric came up, they trouble shot it with Jeff and stuff, and that's what he recommended. We put it in, and uh, it's been working since we put it in. Mr. Chairman, is, is Montaigne complete now? Is that, is that the final bill? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, typically any time that he does it, he doesn't bill in portions. He does one, one invoice and then we're done. What do you say about the truck? <sighs> well, the latest that we have from him is that when he gets his check from us, then he'll cut us a check for the truck. So we're giving him one last chance. And if by the end of the year I don't see that check from him, then we'll start going with We could just cut him a check for 24000 and tell him we took mm -hmm. five off for the yeah, truck. <laughs> for the book, so. yeah. yeah, I don't know that that's good. have him send us one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he kind of, as he was here, kept implying that it was going to happen. So like I said, he's, he's explained to us the mechanics of how he's going to pay us, and we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, and if we don't see it shortly, then... A little bit of buyer's remorse there, maybe. Uh, that's what we're kind of wondering, and, and you know, I kind of reached out to him and said, if you don't want it, that's fine. Just tell us, and we'll go again. But yeah. I need a, a direction from you. Yeah. How long has he been in business? Long time. 10, 15, yeah. 20 years, maybe? Yeah, 12, right. more than that. So it shouldn't be a fly-by-night guy. But that, that, that engine has got he runs no hours, engine. hardly any hours on it. Like. So that, I mean, that would be well worth it. Yeah. Just hope we don't take the engine and leave the other part yeah. here. Right? Yeah, we kind of talked about <coughs> parting it out. You'd probably make your money on it with yeah, the size yeah. of those tires. Those tires, when I stood by it, were actually taller than me. I, I was surprised at how big they were. Over four feet, huh? Yeah, over four feet. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make you four foot two? <laughs> 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 well, it's got more than $5,000 worth of tires on it if you went to buy a new yeah. 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 All right, anything else on disbursements? If not, vote. call for the vote. My vote, yes. 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 And I say yes. Okay, financial reports. So move to approve the financial reports. Don makes a motion. Second. Second by Brian. Discussion. So again, the underlying theme here is that flows are just down. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, when we were looking through this yesterday a little bit, um, most areas we are under budget on our expenses. Um, once we knew that the flows were down, um, I asked the guys to really be conscious of what they were spending and, and let's try to, if we need to spend it, we'll spend it, but if we can push it off, we would do that. So I said, we are under budget on all of our expenditures for, for this year, to this point. I mean, we have technically one month left in the reports, but I don't see any big changes. 
it's really hard that we, you know, we have unpredictability in our revenue. So that's, I'm sorry to see. But on, uh, I thought on the page three, the 450, I know, page two, <coughs> 413. Office equipment. Didn't we do a bunch of computers this year? We did. Why aren't they showing up there? Uh, they are. Are they? Um, $940. I mean, we had a big budget there and we're. Yep, we. I wasn't quite sure how expensive it was going to be for us to get computers. And I think when we. I can't remember the exact number, but I think they were right around. Three or three fifty per computer, and we mm -hmm. did three of them. Okay. I wonder why we had such a big budget there. What were we looking at? I can't answer that for you for sure, Steve. That was a year ago. I'd love to be able to tell you I had a rationale with it, but you didn't know you were going to get computers at you. Right? Yeah, I think that probably is a big part of it. We kind of padded it a little bit just to make sure that we didn't come in with not enough money for the computers. Oh, actually no, Steve. I think the computers went under 411.15. Right? Was it office improvement or was it supplies? What equipment do we lease? <laughs> the copier. <clears throat> and, oh, the okay. and the postage machine. But the majority of that is the copier. This um, dumping. Mm -hmm. uh, Three twenty for everybody. Right? You're talking about category. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, that's we're over there on that top one there. 32006. And that it's probably due to the island view pocket. That's I, I think is probably a fair statement, yes. But having said that, next year well as of now, uh, we'll get one check from Voyagers National Park, I think, this year, yeah, or that will be for this year. Um, but they're online, so we're not going to have any more dumping from the park, I would expect. Um, Shea Shea theoretically is going to be online at the, at the end of this year, beginning of the next. Um, so that dumping also goes away. So um, the dumping will decrease a little bit for the other categories. Crandall is going to continue with his business as normal. When we did kind of scan one of his months that he submitted to us, because when he dumps, he has to give us who he dumped to or who he dumped for. Um, there's not. We were a little surprised. We thought a majority of his dumping business would go away. I don't. It, it's going to decrease for sure, but I don't know that it's. He's still going to have a viable business. I think when you look at who he's dumping for. So, mm -hmm. but I think this that one's going to be a little bit of a learning for us next year. I think that was that uh, detention tank. He had, to, he had a bunch of clean water in there. He had to empty out. So there was three loads for that. Um, he's done some other work along with the project as well. I okay. Anything else on the financials? Now a call for a vote. Mike? I vote yes. 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 And I say yes. Old business, 2019 budget. So the budget we talked about last month as well. Uh, there haven't been significant changes to it. I did update the flows with the latest, um, with November's data. Um, the other thing with the budget is because of the fact that we have the union contract hanging out there, it's really tough to know exactly what the expenditures are going to be in terms of anything that's tied to the contract. So at this point, what I've done with the contract is just left in the 2018 numbers. I didn't change any of those numbers, um, specifically um, salaries, um, central pension fund contributions, um, insurance, health insurance that is. Um, communication allowance, 
You know, the, anything that's really tied to the contract, I haven't changed that. Uh, so what I'm kind of thinking, and I'm open to suggestions on this, is that we tentatively approve this budget so that we have it completed for this year. And then maybe once we have the union contract in place, we revisit the budget. Uh, you, the union insurance isn't going to raise any. Well, but there is, we only pay, we pay all but $10 for it. Mm -hmm. So that could change. But I mean, that is only $10 a month times five employees, $50 a month times $600 a year. Bob's insurance could probably go up. I have those numbers, so yes, it did. Nine percent, I think. Yeah. So it'd probably be, uh, being that we only have an net income without those changes of 2,788, there's probably going to be, if there's any type of salary increase at all, we're going to be hitting the, hitting the budget again. And keep in mind when I did these salary numbers, um, there is a, I did factor in um, overtime into these as well. I think uh, there's about 8.3% overtime that is factored into this. So the, the budgeted salary isn't the exact salary necessarily because of the fact that we have overtime, which we have to predict a little bit. So we still may not need to adjust the budget once we decide what we're doing with the union, but I can't tell you that for sure. So what's the usual percentage each year of overtime? Did you bump it up a little bit? Uh, I've looked at the past three years, and the average of those three years was 8.3%. Oh, all right. So that's the number that I use. So it's still pretty, pretty safe or accurate number, uh, possibly. Within a percent or two, I'd say. Right. Sure. Yes. Why do we have uh, two listings for the boom truck under uh, vehicle expenses? Oh, we have yeah, two. Four sixty-eight. Oh. Point four two and 468.52. We have two boom trucks. Pardon? We have two boom trucks. We have two boom yeah. trucks? Yeah. We got our 84 yet, and then we got our 2008. We still have our old one that we use at times. Okay. It's like a 1984 GMC special. Yeah. Good year for boom trucks. If you'd like, I can walk through the budget. It, it, I mean, like I said, it's not many changes from last time. If I had it, numbers for, say, health insurances or... Is there any changes though that go over? Like I said, the there? flow, because I, I try to stay on top of that. Okay. Um, the flows change slightly, which means that the income changed slightly. Um, I didn't make any adjustments for the East Cooch contract, which is on the agenda that we need to talk about. Um, we also get our insurance numbers from the League of Minnesota Cities within the first quarter of next year for <coughs> 2018 because we do renew in February. So those numbers are also based on 2018 numbers, but that's the same as we always do. Um. Mr. Chairman, maybe maybe it would be helpful to me if you could explain what those the top line what they what they represent. So I understand budget 2019 is that what's being proposed? Yes. All right. And, and then, then any comments? Okay. And, and then, then at the last meeting. Um, it was requested that we had the actual expenses for 2018 year-to-date put in there, along with what the 2018 budget year-to-date was. So what's that month through? So that's through December 13th. Both the budget and the actual? The last two columns. Yep. Okay. Because they don't match up to the... Income and expense. That's you mean on the financial report? Because those numbers are run through the end of November, and these are through December 13th. I panicked for a minute too when I looked at them and I couldn't figure it out, but that's what it is. 
it might be better to have run it through November. In hindsight. Yeah. Oh, the past two columns are through December 13th? December 13th, through yesterday. So the, the budget year to date is also through December 13th. So when you look at the budget year to date, there's still one more month that would be associated with that number. So for example, um, let me find a good one. Actually, you wouldn't have another month, would you? Because it would oh, be in January. Well, it's because of the fact that we still have bills outstanding for December that we pay in January. But that doesn't go against, is, does that go against the budget still? <coughs> there, is, there is carryover with that because we don't yet end you our don't year. You don't run it on cash basis, then you run it on somewhat of accrual then. Sure. You bring it back. All right. Um, I think we're missing the, the actual 2018 budget. I don't know why we have to have through December on there, but... Is there what do you, it's hard to compare the two years. I had I mean, it on We have it on our financials, I imagine. I had it on there and then when I was trying to print it off so that it would fit on one page. I hid that column. The actual 2018 budget, and then we can compare what we're yeah. doing for the next year, side by side. So maybe the comments could be hidden. Sure, if you in want. In the future, and she, then, uh, she said she's got it, but it, she couldn't print yeah, it, and that's it's I hidden. So yeah, so yeah. she could hide that column, then make room for yeah, that yeah, column. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're okay with that, yeah. Yeah, then you could just, yeah. You actually could run it. Yeah, that sounds good. You looking for a motion to approve the 2019 budget? Yes, I am done. I would so sure. move. Seconded. Oh, discussion? Yeah, for discussion. Yeah. Oh, can we just. Uh, we need a second. Was there a second? No second. Who was Don Don is Don 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 Thank you, sir. Okay, now, Can we shrink the font style and stuff like that and get get that fit that other one in there? Actually, it's printing right now, so you'll have all the numbers. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. Still working on it. Trying to make it the way we want it. All right. So that 481, is that, uh, I'll just use John for example, for his uh, insurance and his medical and dental and life. Is that include his spouse too? Then that twelve thousand. Does it include what? His spouse too. How does? I don't see anything where. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's one rate. So, Greg, for example, has a wife and a child. Uh -huh. The one rate covers all of them. Okay. else on the budget? I have a question on that. <coughs> the comments. Okay. I had it. Okay, on uh, 461 4, page 5. There's in the notes, comments, it says televising line from ponds to, is that holiday? Yeah. Holiday what? Station. The oh, holiday gas station. Yeah. And that that comment actually was a relic from when we very first started the budget conversations because I had originally put that 40000 into that category and then when the budget committee met, um, they decided that it would be better off to leave that at the bottom and that we'll take it from reserves. That's just televising though. No, it would be cleaning. 5000 It says 5000 no, Right, but... Just ignore that comment. Okay. 
because we it's a forty thousand the quote that we have is forty thousand dollars to clean and televise. Okay. So if you look at the very last page, yeah, it should say on there. I know. On the I very know. bottom there, it yeah. says line cleanings from Ponds to Eleventh Street Third Avenue, forty thousand reserved to be used. That's what. That includes that televising. Yep. Yeah. Any other? So here's the copies that you oh. wanted. Different software? Yeah, there's, I did not even look for it. Thank you. No, sir. From that previous conversation where we talked about how there's one month left in the budget, if you even look at the top line, there's a 301.01 in Rational Falls Water Plant. We've budgeted 13,500 for that, and our year-to-date budget is only 12,847 because the December bill will be going out once December is completed. So that's instead of carrying over the, it just gets complicated. The one month that's left for their bill is what's left for that year-to-date budget to make year-to-date match 2018 budget column. We got her. Okay. Yeah, we're a month behind. It'd be nice to have highlighters and highlight how many are we're actually going over our 18 budget. That we can we can figure it out. Truthfully, Steve, I and think computer in, can do that. In most instances, we I actually came in. I made 2019 <clears throat> lower than 2018, either the same or lower. There are a couple exceptions to that. Um, engineering services, just given where we're at with the I and I, I did bump those up, so that's 410. Or, sorry, professional services, engineering is the first one I saw. Um, general, legal, and then legal labor. Yeah, 20000 um, $14,000 more. So that one that you talked about, 41315, the office admin for office equipment and improvements. I looked at what we actually spent on that one, and I lowered that one from 3500 last year to 1000 this year. It looks like uh, with one month to go, we're about two hundred and ten thousand to the good. No. Too easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, on, on uh, four thirty-five, can you explain what legal for the plant is? That was just money that I put in there that if for some reason, um, if there was something that came up with the plant and we wanted a legal opinion, I know at one point um, John had talked about having some professionals review our permit when it came through, um, whether it's engineering or legal, if we ever have a permit. Or if there's something that comes up with the I and I that we feel that there's a legal issue that's more plant related than administrative related, I, I put some money there just for that reason. I don't know if it's realistic, but I just wanted to make sure that we were covered. I guess I don't understand the difference between administrative and plant for legal. I think, to me, anything, the only time we would need a legal opinion for the plant was likely if we were into some discharge situation with the MPCA or if there was something along with our permit or something more operation related. That was kind of my thinking there. 
So we spent over 6000 this year. We didn't spend anything, have we? Correct. We haven't spent anything. That's there. just 6000 was, was budgeted. budgeted. Oh, that was the budget, yeah. yeah. our pr proposed service agreement with the City of International Falls? No, I didn't put anything That will be taken out of reserves to us. Um, well, because of the fact that we don't know anything about that agreement yet, I didn't want to make any presumptions as to how we would do it or whatever it costs. What would it come out of, do you think? Like maintenance or? Um, we, maintenance or maybe professional services, I guess. It depends what the expense would be and what would how the board would want to classify well, we get, You know, and then if we have another dry year, you know, then it becomes where does that money come from? So is it come uh, come out of maintenance or you know, there's got to be mm -hmm. that that's not an ideal thing to do. But it's an expense. And it's yeah, something you never had before. But what? Well, just what? curiosity, what type of? Uh, software do you use for these worksheets? QuickBooks. Oh wait, that's in Excel. Okay, I'll help you. I think it, I'll help you on that, to put columns on each page, because that would help. Or oh, I mean, the headings? Not, the headings, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Help you on that. It makes it hard to keep track of, so I'll show you how to do that. Pretty knowledgeable on that software. On anything else in life. All right, anything else on the budget. If not, call for a vote. I vote yes. 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 So, and yes for me. I have a view update. Well, as soon as Don and I get done here, we'll be heading to the next update meeting, but what I do know is Part C has been, for all practical purposes, completed. They do have a few punch list items. So if you recall, Part C, for Contract C, is the Voyager's National Park. So there's lift station 400 associated with that and a couple grinder stations. Um, that project went very well by all measures. Um, they completed very quickly, and that part's done. Part A, the, um, the Wagner portion of it, I haven't heard much lately. I know that they were trying to get another 20 grinder stations in the ground, 20-ish, before they closed up for the winter. We'll find out later this afternoon where they're at on that one. Part B, which is the USA, they've experienced a few more issues. Um, I think at the last meeting we talked about Cormorant Village and how there were some issues there. They ultimately found, <laughs> and I can't remember where we were at with the, with the ongoing story there, but they they had a number of grinder stations that were experiencing issues. Um, they went into, at first they thought it was froze up. They cleared that out. Uh, they went into the line, found a big wad of duct tape. They thought maybe that was going to cut or clear up the issue. Um, then that didn't clear up the issue. <coughs> they ultimately found that they had a kink in their main line coming out of Cormor. So they had to excavate and they fixed that line. My understanding is since then they've continued to have some issues with certain grinders. They have quality flow on site. And it's sound, the latest I've heard is it sounds like there are some issues with seals on the grinder stations that they're working with quality to figure out what's going on. So that's the latest that I know right now. I'm not sure how many grinders have been put in place since our last board meeting. Um, so. That's about it on Island View, I think. Oh, and the issues that we had at Lift Station 100 have primarily been resolved. There's a few hanging out there, but we got good response from all parties involved. Um, so for the most part, things have been resolved there, but there's a couple things hanging out there that are being addressed. Yeah. All right. Mr. Chair, I yes. think uh, uh, the plan was that these USA was going to be working on the resorts. All the resorts have to be up and running by next spring. So yeah. That was probably going to happen during the winter. I don't know. I know the last meeting they were thinking they'd, the thought that I heard was that they'd have those done by the end of this year. Thunderbird is online. 
Um, but I haven't heard anything about the rest of them. But I think these issues at Cormorant have kind of derailed them a little bit on the resorts. Anything else on that? If not, we'll go to North Cooch, East Cooch contract. So in front of you, you have um, the one that says 2019 service contract at the top is what I've put together. The second one is the one provided by East Cooch. Um, we're not far off on the totals. Um, but having, having said that, it's the same conversation that we just had with the budget, that there are numbers in this contract that could be um, changed as a result of whatever happens with the union contract. So I see that there's a bit of a fork in the road here for the board. Um, we can uh, either approve one of those contracts in front of you and have it done for 2019. Uh, East Cooch is proposing a six-month contract. Oh, I didn't change the dates in mine. In mine. So there's a conversation of whether we want six months or a year. Um, or I think it would be okay as well for us to talk to East Cooch and say that we'd like to get through union negotiations before we change any terms in this contract. Um, so at that, I'll leave it for discussion with you. I'll move to vote for discussion. Okay. You move for what? To approve what contract? Yeah, we have what's on the agenda. What does it say? You have two contracts, Steve. The one on your right is the one that I prepared. The one on your left is the East Cooch one. Uh, the only difference is really between the two. Uh, some of the numbers are slightly different. I think in the end we're about about four thousand. Three thousand. Uh, well, about uh, three hundred dollars a month different. Ours is a little bit higher. Um, and East Cooch has asked for six months and. I didn't change ours as a, as a year, but that's up to the board. So we can have discussion now before we do any voting. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, that's mm -hmm. that I was looking at. I mean, what was the motion? There was no motion. Um, there was no motion to approve no. the Steward, contract yeah. for discussion. But Which one are you I didn't know we had two. I thought I was thinking this was our Unless own. Unless you want one, one you want to make a motion for you. Sure. Yeah. I thought I heard the motion. That's all. There's two different. There's two, it, there's two, two main dollar signs <laughs> out here. Um, I I I know that ours. I came up with uh, twenty six hundred fifty two ninety four difference. If you take half of ours and go half of theirs, theirs is like you say three hundred dollars short a month. And I don't know where that's coming from. Is that just kind of potential wages, or how are you figure it, or? No, office, this, there's a few different areas. Yep, there's a few different areas. I didn't make any changes. So the parts that are highlighted in the, the one that says 2019 first contract at the top on page two of that, um, the parts that are highlighted are ones, again, that could be potentially um, affected by any contract changes. On the one that I prepared, I did my best to go through our books and pull out any expenses that I feel are joint expenses between the two districts, and then uh, divvy them up half and half. Uh, it, with half and half on anything office-wise, um, anything associated with a vehicle, because we have basically four vehicles in our fleet. I broke it out and I charged them 25% of the total, which would be equivalent to one vehicle. So like on gas, for example, the gas averages must be 480-ish a month. So I charge them the equivalent of one vehicle for Mr. Chair, I know yes. that's one of the items there, but because our lift stations are only go as far as Rainier, right? So with Island View, they're going to be traveling a lot farther. These coach is going to have to kick in more for gas. Is that 
that makes sense. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree that I would expect our gas costs to increase, our monthly gas bills. It's a lot different gas prices running all the way out to Shea Shea than there is the location to your point. And another thing I have a question on is the, um, that we provide 85 hours a month. Mm -hmm. they, that's included in our operation and maintenance. And they do that regardless whether they reach the 85 or not? Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. so the operation and maintenance, just so we're very clear on that, they actually pay for one full loaded operator salary. So it's not just the paychecks that we're giving our employees, it's all the goodies associated with it. Uh, I factor in all the insurances, I factor in PERA, Social Security, Medicare, um, let me pull it up here. Some of their training, I factored in retiree costs because to me that is cost of having employees, that's a loaded salary number. Um, I try to be as, as complete with it as I can. Having said that, I'm, I'm you know, there's some times where I'm, I look at this every year and I say, why didn't I include that last year? But this isn't evolution. Yeah, so it's uh, their salary plus their overtime, PERA, Social Security, Medicare, health insurance, dental, life, workers' comp, um, central pension fund, training and licenses, uh, communication allowance is factored in their boot allowance and the retiree benefits. Well, These coach provided that why we put in for a half year contract, we felt that there are so many unknowns right now that at the half of the year we could possibly adjust it so everything is fair. And I'm thinking that since the traveling, the travel time is going to be double. So it's 85 hours a month. You know, you, you travel from here to Rainier versus traveling here to Shea Shea, that's all that mark, that windshield time is going to be um, tracked. And if you're only 85 hours a month, you might reach that more months than normally. But we do pay, they do pay for anything over 85. So to finish yeah. answering the question yeah. to you, Steve, what's in that operation and maintenance is their full loaded salary. But yes, then they get 85 hours a month. So if you think about it, a full loaded salary, the average month, if you work 40 hours a week, there's four weeks in a month, that's 160 hours. The 85 hours, even though they're paying for a full employee, they're really only getting half of a month's work out of them free each month. Anything over that 85, yes, then they do pay an hourly loaded rate. Well, which is that currently that 5520 how can we if we take your proposed contract amount divided by two um you get 82,652.94 okay and they're only at 80,922 i feel more comfortable if if these numbers match so Don, is there a reason why they came up with a smaller amount than what was the original contract? Again, we've got so much that's unknown. Okay. I, you know, I figured the, the, the salaries or union contract might go up two and a half percent. It might not, might get nothing. We don't know. We got a brand new system out in Island View. Are we going to be sending a vehicle out there every day? No. It's it's a brand new system. It shouldn't require anything. We don't right. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah. That's why I proposed a half year contract. I figure at the end of the half year we can sit down and you know, we could up the contract to East Pooch, we could lower it. We don't know. So, well, Mr. Chairman, yes. Don, I think you're making the argument for having your own person, having your own staff instead of uh, contracting with North Cooch. No. Yeah. Because then you'll know, because there's so many unknowns, why, why not have your own person and then you just pay them 
and uh, we don't have to go through this as a board. No. Well, I, I guess the other question I have, Mr. Chairman, is on the hourly loaded rate. Local contractors are charging $90 an hour, and we're charging $55. I mean, you'll never convince me that the other entities are not subsidizing the East Cooch district. Well, that 55-25 is highway robbery. It's what? Highway robbery. I mean, what we charge for a man in a truck at 55-25 an hour is it's a heck of a deal for East Cooch. Well, a man in pickup? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, uh, you'd say this, but we, where's the numbers? Where's the figures? You know, uh, okay, take, uh, you know, bring something that's in. That's a loaded cost. Right? It's a loaded cost. Yeah. Having said that, it may not have worked a truck into that hourly cost, which we can, but when you look at the numbers for the truck, I mean, we're talking, we're talking $255 a month, so the daily cost is $10 a day for a truck. Well, there's got to be a reason that contractors in the area charge $90 an hour. Which contractors, so though? We don't know. Corn, heavy equipment? Canners. Yeah. Huh? Plumbers. Plumbing, electrical, or all of them. Well, they're also carrying liability insurance as well. That East Cooch has their own liability insurance. So if, if one of the employees is going up the lake and something happens, North Cooch is not responsible, East Cooch is going to cover it? It's professional liability insurance that I'm talking about with corns and, plum er, and the plumbers and such. That's different than personal liability. It's different than workman's comp. If they, one of our employees get hurt, it's covered under our workman's comp because we're in a contract with East, East Cooch. I think if the issue, one of the issues. The contractors is also got overhead costs that they have to build and they all already the yeah. We don't have overhead costs here? They've already been built in. It's built into the contract. We're paying less. When they don't reach the 85 hours, we're actually making out quick. So They only get, East Cooch only gets half of the time of our employees, but they're paying for the full time of it. Plus, any time they go over that half time, we're basically getting paid double for that 85, because at hour 86, we've already covered hour 86, but then we're charging 55, 25 on top of that. So I guess in a sense, we're getting $110.50 per hour for 80, hour 86 and above. Well, I would like to see somehow East Cooch proposes something that's equal to half of what we propose. And I don't know how they would well, do that. But well, what I we could also <laughs> do is approve our, the budget, or our, our contract for six months. Would probably be the easiest. Yeah. 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 Okay. Steve, I think the numbers are just different because Don and I haven't sat down and compared numbers. Okay. He presented that to me. I wanted to present our contract to the board to see what the board's appetite was at this time. And if you'd like, we can sit down. I'll sit down with Don and we can compare numbers and see if we can close that three hundred dollar gap, or we can approve our contract and send it back to East Cooch Board and see what they say. So we all we would have to do to prove ours is change the contract yeah. period. Yeah, I just missed that when I was printing it. I mean, yeah. it's close enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they. I think it's a good deal for us for North Coast. Well, it's good because our our guys know what's coming down the pipe. They know the whole system, and that helps managing our our plant. And basically, you get four employees for the cost of three. You get, yeah. and then. <laughs> Yeah. When you look at Stacy, we only pay half of Stacy's rate. And how much time do you spend on East Scooch? This is a fine one because um, my employees get into situations that I try to help alleviate for them. It's a very great area, and I think that that probably does need to be addressed. I want to make sure that my employees can do the job, their jobs to the best of their ability which sometimes means that I get involved with East Cooch things to make sure that my guys have what they need. So yes, it's a gray area.
And that's something that I actually had suggested that maybe um, maybe East Cooch wants to start paying a portion of my salary as well. Well, if you're spending time on that, you should be. I don't know what that number is going to be. Well, that's the no. tough part, right? Because I don't really have any benefits associated with my position. So it could be a simple straight rate of I think I get paid just under $29 an hour or something like that. So when you factor it in, we might be looking at $35 to $40 an hour for my time. You know, with all the PERA right. and right. everything, Social Security, Medicare. So is that something we want to look at adding before we do this? Or something to look for for the well, future? Well, if we don't put it in now, I think you need to maybe try and keep somewhat uh, track of how many hours in that six month period. So that's a good idea. We can do that. Well, that's a good idea because there's probably going to be adjustments made anyway, so let's add that to the adjustments. I mean, it's not going to be a huge amount of dollars, but. Right. Yeah. No. Still got to make it fair for sure. North Coach. Yeah. Do we have any motions? Well, I, I just I don't see why they need to have your contract. I don't know how it's going to benefit them because I don't see our costs going down, our our rates going down at all. No, it could. I don't well, see where we would. I'm have just to trying do. to be fair. Yeah, and that's what East Coast is trying to do: be fair. If you. You know, I've got to approve this contract by the end of this year, or mm -hmm. our budget by the end of this year. Well, would yes, you like a motion to offer um, the North Coach version of this contract for a six month period to East Coach? Either that or all the all the contract amended for six months. That's a couple options. Yeah, that's what it, yeah, that's basically So our ours contract yeah, ours, North but North. amendment saying for six months and then they'll be renegotiated. Right, right. right. Is that what you want? Yeah, yeah. Okay, motion by John. I'll second it. Second um, by Steve. What ha I mean we have to approve the new contract by the end of December, right? Oh we should, yeah. According to this language at the top. What happens if we don't? I mean, what happens then? So can you still go on? Well, I don't know. That's I have right. to put in a, a figure into my budget. I can put, the higher, put a higher figure higher in. Figure, yeah. I, <laughs> okay, any other discussion? Well, Mr. Chair, I would amend uh, the motion to uh, have the hourly loaded rate set at ninety dollars instead of fifty five twenty five. Well, uh, we wouldn't be able to do that unless we had just we have to show on paper why we came up with that dollar amount. We couldn't just put in the number without any backup. I don't know how we could ever come up with that number. I really don't. So we looked at every possible scenario. We added it last time, and granted, with something may have been missed, but I don't know how it could possibly go up forty dollars or thirty-five dollars. But that's something we definitely can look at for the next six months because we do need to adjust yeah. it. And yeah. at that point, maybe we need to factor in some. I don't know what it would be—a building depreciation. I don't know what we want to. Talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if uh, depreciations. I yeah, that's something. That's something yeah. we can all add. Those, you know, Bob. And I think that'd be something we need you there for too, as part of the committee, and just look at this and see what we can come up with. The last year there was four months where they exceeded the eighty-five. Yeah. Anything else on that contract? We do have a motion from Bob. Right? Motion to amend. Okay. Motion to amend the contract to what was it, 90? Yep. $90 for the hourly loaded rate. Any other discussion on that? So, what we're going to do is vote on a six month uh, period? Yes. But with the addition of the $90 
uh, for the elderly alone. Well, yeah, I mean, Is there a second? No. Is there a second to that? No. No. There's... Okay. Is there a second? Last call for a second. Okay. Motion fails for no second. All right, back to the original motion. Do we have any other question uh, on the service contract that's been put on the table? If not, we'll ask for a vote. Mike? I vote no. Yes. Yes. Steve? Yes. Abstain. No. And yes. So, so this is approved? Yes, it's approved for six months it's going to be amended. For six months? Yeah. We're going to change the effective period. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll then we'll look at change it. the dates on this, Don, and I'll offer you a different one. So I know what to put in my... Right. Yeah. Don. Basically, you're going to add 1800 bucks to... <laughs> 920. Yeah. Yeah. Don, I'll make a change oh, yeah, to this to reflect what the board did, and then I'll give it to you before your meeting. Yeah. Okay. So in the six-month period, this is all back opened up? Yeah. Seventeen hundred and twenty something bucks. Yeah, it's kind of something. All right. All right. Where am I here? Okay, union negotiation update. Uh, there's not much of an update. The union negotiating committee met. Was that last week? It's all running together. Last Somewhere week like that. Or a week before. <laughs> Um, and we basically, just so that everybody had their head around the contract, walked through the contract, kind of skipped any of the boilerplate language, talked about the areas that could be subject to change, um, decided that we're going, we asked the union for their request because they had a document prepared that, of things that they wanted to change. Um, the union negotiated committee is set to meet again tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, and I do have the union's request, and I owe all of you a document, too, because you asked for a summary of the things we talked about, and I've been trying to get that completed. So I'll get that completed this afternoon and send it to the four of you, along with the union's request, and then we can go from there tomorrow. Great. All right. I, uh, I just got a little question. I think I'm, I'm just wondering whether this you go first, no you go first type thing, is that typical? Like, we want them to make their offer first and they probably want us to make our offer first so we just flip a coin union yeah. always makes their offer yeah. first they always make their offer first any negotiations i've ever been on what is the percent wage increase that the union has requested i haven't looked at it yet to tell you the truth i've been trying to get our summary done so that i wasn't tainted by what was ever in there and then i there was a lot to prepare for this board meeting. So. Have they requested a date yet? No. Okay. I uh, told them that when we were sitting down again and that I'd update them from there. I don't know if we want to discuss negotiations at an open meeting yet mm -hmm. anyway. No, oh, I, I, I'm just looking so I can sure. have yeah. my budget. I'm sure that you would want to know. Yeah, well, as soon as possible, yeah. <laughs> but we don't yet. We'll know more after tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. We'll have a little bit more direction. Well, you can tell them what they're proposing. They, I'm sure they've thrown a figure. I haven't looked at it yet. Yeah. yeah. We shouldn't be discussing that, though. Right now, I don't think. So that's all in union negotiating. I just wanted to let you all know that we are progressing, and we'll know more tomorrow. Great. Okay. But back to the negotiations thing, I think the, the board should have a say on is what length of period do you want to run this contract? Do you want a two-year contract, or what is the board's uh, opinion? That should be up to the board. Yep, so last time the, what we did was the union negotiating committee kind of worked out some of the, the bigger details, kind of had their head around what they thought they wanted to bring back to the board, and then we had a full meeting of the board for a little bit of discussion on that, and then the board basically sent the union negotiating committee back again. So. But before you even start that, the board should know what length of a contract you're working on. Are you working on a one-year, two-year, three-year, four-year, what year? I mean, when you go into negotiations, you've got to go in there knowing how long a period this contract's going to run. 
that hasn't even been, been decided if it's going to be a one or year or two year or three year or four year. I mean, I think it's up to the board to make that decision before you go into negotiations. Yeah. You don't negotiate something if you if you don't know how long the period it's going to go. The issue with that, though, is because during negotiations, things may make it a one, two, or three, depending on mm -hmm. on a lot of different things. The insurance rates, yeah. the uh, salary may be there. We'd be willing, it, there's just a lot involved. See, to, before we see the offer, for us to go in and say we want a three or four year yet. I mean, you can make that statement and as a, we could have a consensus or we'd like to see a longer contract as a board than, more than a shorter to make it easier, but we want to be careful not to go into that, you know, especially when we're on TV saying things that uh, nego it's, it's going to be negotiated. The county went three years this time, and normally we've been going two um, years ago. I think they went four at one time, but the length of a contract is a negotiated item. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of factors that go into. You in can't through. negotiate till this board agrees what length of period you want to go. I mean, it, it, unless the board don't care how long, if you how long of uh, it's a negotiated item. Time. When the, the union <laughs> proposes. That proposal is going to come back to us, yeah, yeah, and we decide. But if we'd like, as a board, to see a longer contract, yeah. just make that yeah. general statement. That's fine. It's just that we can't really be held to the fire to that. But it's it, not really a lot of fun no. to have to do it every year. No, no, no. And there's cost associated with it. It's easier to budget too. Well, I would definitely not be not in favor of one year myself. But with East Cooch coming on board now, and what happens? I mean, what's going to happen? That's why the length of the contract, to me, I think is very important. And that's good for us to know going into it. So we appreciate you bringing that up. You know, I just don't know, you know, what we're going to run into. So, I mean, you don't want to go with a, a longer contract and then end up biting us or. or yeah. Anything else on union you've got uh, negotiating up there? Not okay. I and I. So we come back to the schedule of compliance again. I asked the questions. I didn't receive any. Uh, sure you one. did. Sorry? I got your email. So the our one suggest, suggested having our, our uh, consultant give us an update and provide us his conclusions on what he thought. So for him to come, I received quotes from him. Um, for a conference call, he figured it would be about $500. Um, let me pull it up here. For a conference call, it was going to be about $500. For a video conference with a PowerPoint presentation, he was suggesting it would be between 2000 and 2500 and for an in-person presentation with PowerPoint, it was going to be 4500 to $5,000 for him to come. I went back and I said, uh, we're not looking for a heavy-duty technical for presentation. This is basically just a meeting to answer questions for, from the board and address any of their concerns. He responded with, those numbers are a little bit heavy then. He would recommend just doing a call, short presentation, then Q&A. So, could you all talk about what the request was again from the city? Um, well, we had a couple of requests. One was that I sit down with Ken Anderson, the city administrator, and go through the changes or, or the non-changes to the schedule of compliance versus what the city had asked for. So Ken and I did that on Tuesday. Okay. Um, I think we answered, I was able to answer some of the city's questions. Um, additionally, Bob sent me an email suggesting, let me pull it up just so I don't misrepresent. At the last board meeting we talked about, or there was discussion about how installing bigger pumps at EQ and moving the discharge location to the headworks of the plant would help alleviate the situation. So I sent you all an email kind of outlining my conversation with the MPCA as well. Um, putting bigger pumps in at EQ is not the solution. Not only that, but in the report, 
he also suggested that the pump or the pipes that are in place right now are not big enough for the exact or the pumps that are in place that the velocity going through the pump or through the pipes and some other factors are not right for the pipes so that would also mean especially if we were to put in larger pumps that we would need to replace that piping and basically that piping would be from eq uh, to the manhole that's in front of the motel that's there that's about where it is um, so continuing down the path of the pumps and the pipes uh, talking with the mpca that would require an approval it would require a couple months of engineering it would require about six months to be able uh, to get that approved through them so we're looking and we can't do any of that work during peak flow seasons because we'd have to hold back that flow as we were chasing or replacing old pumps and, and piping um, so we'd be looking at probably you know about this time of the year next year would be the earliest that we could address that maybe October November it depends on timing of things and the MPCA indicated that we can go ahead, and this was the design engineer who's very familiar with our facility he said you can go ahead and do that but that's not going to solve your problem you still need to address the I&I &I. Uh, the conversation was there's a few instances where we've had bypasses if they've been very short length in time that having bigger pumps may have helped us um, but some of the the more traditional bypasses that we've had where we've gone for multiple hours or in some instances we've had over a day or two during the 2014 flood um, those bigger pumps aren't going to do anything for us in those circumstances um, so that's the pumps and the pipes moving the bypass to the plant is something that I need to talk to the engineer again because after talking with the guys I really don't see any benefit to that um, because we still have to have the capability at EQ to be able to discharge there because if if we were into a situation like 2014 again where the rain just kept coming and coming and coming and those pumps regardless of how big they were couldn't keep up we'd be having problems there which would also lead to problems in those homes between here and the plant or between EQ and the plant um, so moving the bypass to the plant would really only allow relief to the plant if we were getting high flows from the west and we had significant flows coming from EQ then if they were into a situation that the plant was getting overwhelmed then they could bypass here and they'd have immediate relief um, I'm not quite sure other than that the full benefit of having the bypass at the plant um, like I said in conversation with our operators they don't necessarily see the immediate benefit of that as well um, so I think that kind of summarizes that so what I can see is maybe that we need to put another tank in that storage tank so in that report there was a suggestion that you need a four million gallon or four million gallon storage tank how many gallon four million to be able to contain some of the larger releases that's something that I think he, I need to circle back with him um, to understand what he was basing that off of I think we need to look at more we can't use 2014 as our benchmarker we have to use that as our sanity check but I think we need to look at our more traditional releases and see truly what size tank we would need but a tank is in the neighborhood of two dollars per gallon to put that in so if we truly needed to go with that four million gallon tank hmm. we'd be looking at eight million dollars for a tank not to mention <coughs> but that's a big tank our EQ right now is 300 and 350,000 that's 30 feet deep and what 50 feet across yeah. um, but in the long run if it solved our problem I guess well uh, maybe not probably not but anyway um, I, I read the report and it's kind of wacky I think I think it's wacky uh, I are we paid up with these people these engineers I paid him for the report because it was getting to the point that it was getting long overdue that I our bill so we, we paid how about, much have we spent we paid this? about seventeen thousand dollars for that report Stacy looked yesterday and we think we paid about twenty one thousand dollars to them so far we need to double check that number because he told me that we were at about five thousand dollars within 
um, yeah, what he quoted. Well. But I recall him quoting more around $40,000 for the entire project, so I need to pull his contract uh, again. You know, I'm pretty sure we picked the wrong engineer for this job. And um, I mean, I would like to look at somebody else, because it, it's unacceptable, unrealistic, the stuff that he's talking about. You know, I mean, it's going to take a little of this and a little of that. We know that. And it will take mitigation of the I and I at some point. If you take it by basin by basin or whatever, take it slowly, as long as you've got a plan in place, that's the way I would do it. And then, and then try to look at some way to change piping and whatever to, you know. But this, I don't like that. That report just does not make any sense whatsoever. And that's I, one of the reasons I held back with the report because I wanted to circle back with him and, and get it one so it was much more readable because it took a lot of work to understand what he was really trying to tell us there. Right. Did he generate any numbers at all, any hydraulics in this thing, or was it just wordy, uh, verbiage? Just what was in the report. So we don't even know whether his conclusions are... I mean, at the end of the day, we do have a concern. This was one of the other reasons that I held back on that report. Um, he is saying that the plant that was delivered to us during our project isn't the plant that we paid yeah, for. Yeah. And that's where you get engineer against engineer, well, which is... Yeah, and I, I think that was part of it was real unprofessional, to tell you the truth. I, I think he went after with the Smith and Nolte. Maybe he, there is, maybe there was some mistakes made, but the way that they went after WSN, I, I, I think it's unfair. Um, without having WSN be able to, you know, uh, reply. Well, I, I, I've said it before. Um, the schedule of compliance, they notice their violations and they're back to 2013. That's pre-2014 pre when we had our plant renovation. The MPCA signed off on those permits for the plant renovation. There's no engineer in the world that can draw plans for catastrophic events. How are you going to do that? So this 2014 is an anomaly and I don't think it, you know, sure we got we got all that rain and, you know, how are we supposed to handle it all? So when they looked at our violations, our discharges, they went back 15 years and there was a consistent, um, there was a consistency to how often they we were They should have addressed that when we remodeled our plant then. Well, the problem with doing that is you don't design a plant for twice a year issues. Yeah. You can't because well, then everything's oh, undersized no. and it doesn't work efficiently. No, the EPA will not allow that. Right. Or the, the MPC will not allow to design for I&I. &I. That's, that's so what they have to do when they're designing our plant is they actually have to look at what normal flows are. And then they, they do take into account surcharges when, you know, when we do have some of these rain instances. But when we have the significant increase in flows during rain events that we have, it is indication of a bigger problem that you can't design a plant for. You just can't do it. Well, Mr. Chairman, the, the, uh, I think the report is very valid. Um, the item that points out uh, larger pumps at the EQ and the larger pipeline would certainly reduce the number of discharges that we would have over the next 15 years. The plant is the certified discharge point. The EQ isn't. That's why we get written up by the MPCA if there was a oversized discharge here. It would certainly be uh, flagged, but it's, it's a this is the certified discharge point for the district. And so putting in larger pumps and pipeline would be of value to the district and its entities. So the larger pumps would have only helped a very small handful of discharges that we've had, and likely in the future that they're very limited as to which ones they would minimize. That's also coming from the design engineer that took care of our plant. They said, you can do it, but it's not going to help you that much. It's going to be a lot of expense. You'll get some benefit, but it's not going to take care of the problem by any means. Further, the bypass point that they're looking at is not through our authorized discharge point. The plant as a whole 
is not our authorized discharge location. There's one pipe that goes to the river that is our authorized discharge location. What we're looking at is that we would have to do it at the headworks of the plant. There's nothing to say that we could even get into the actual discharge location that we're authorized for. Further, yes, moving it closer to our discharge location helps us, but it's not a significant improvement. It is still ultimately a violation because we bypassed everything in our plant to do it. It's 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 According like the permit that is a violation it, it, by definition it's yeah. still a violation um could i i uh, ask uh does uh the city have the wsn um report or, or is there a report from wsn that's that the city has or for the i and i study for the flow measurement john pardon for the flow measurement study that they yeah yeah in? yeah Yes. I mean, that's all that there is, is a flow study? We have a WSM. Could we see that? I have a copy of it, John. I oh, can share it with you. Yeah. Okay. We also have a copy of their televising as well. I asked for it under the Freedom okay. of Information yeah, Act. Yeah. Have we received our ads bills yet from WSM? We have not. <laughs> Which not. I think is one of those issues that does factor in to AE2S's reports. Because what they were basing their, um, their report off of was um, construction um, drawings at times, permitting information. They had the information that was for the plan. They don't have anything of what actually happened and what the plan actually is. I don't know how much variation there is in there but they are operating off of the best information that they have. Having said that, this is all counter, or it's, it's uh, parallel to the schedule of compliance because solving these problems in advance of signing the schedule of compliance doesn't matter. We can, we can go down the path of looking at bigger pipes and pumps and possibly moving the discharge location at the same time that we're pursuing the schedule of compliance. Schedule compliance is only a saying that we're going to create plans to address the situation. There's no execution that's actually built into the schedule of compliance. Um, can I, yes. One question, though. Um, uh, attached to one of these reports is a uh, is a schedule of the penalty. Uh, yep. The penalties. Now, who's going to pay those penalties if those penalties are imposed? Now, there's two of the entities have cooperated. Uh, have, you know, submitted something. Um, so this yeah. outlines a bigger problem that the district has because we don't have ordinances in place that um, that administer our authority over our entities, over our customers. So that's definitely something that needs to be in place and that's something that the MPCA recognized when they were creating the schedule of compliance. That's actually one of the first steps of the schedule of compliance to get ordinances in place that say this is how your district is being run. The fact that we don't have ordinances is a concern. Even outside of the schedule of compliance, it's a concern. Yeah. But in the ordinances, um, it would explain how that would work. The um, I and I agreement, which is also an early step of the schedule of compliance, would lay out how we want to how those fines would be imposed if we did have to impose fines on our customers. You mentioned that we've paid AE2S. Um, 21,000. 21, and the contract was for 40. So I have to confirm those numbers. Are they done? No. What, what do they have left to do? It's been a while since I've looked at the contract, Steve. I wanted to look at it in advance of the meeting, but I haven't had an opportunity. What would you suggest at this point, Cindy? Well, what I can say is the MPCA has, they've been telling me for a few months that if we didn't sign this, we were looking at court action. Um, they don't want to take on court action. It's not good for them. It's not good for us. 
But they did tell me if we don't sign the schedule of compliance this month that they'll be taking a different strategy in the new year. They were very clear about that. And what is the uh, downfall or the, the cons against signing it in regards to um, issues at hand with us? So as soon as we sign the schedule of compliance, the, start, the clock starts ticking. So all of those milestones that are in there, 30 days, 90 days, 180 days, that all starts, which means that we have work ahead of us. Regardless of what path we go down, whether the court is telling us what action we have to take or whether we're doing it through the schedule of compliance, we have a lot of work ahead of us in the next six months to a year to make sure that we're moving forward on this. So at this point, we're at a crossroads in that the board gets to decide. Do they want the courts to tell them exactly what we're going to do in the time frame that we're going to do it? Or do we want to go down the schedule of compliance where we know what's in front of us and we've already done some of this work to make sure that we are compliant? You know, we just spent how much, $14 million on plan upgrade and expansion. And what, to me, the PCA has made a big mistake by not addressing it at the same time. As, because people get hit with a big rate increase and then, you know, who knows, it might be another huge rate increase that people can't afford. And through the conversation that I had with Ken Anderson, um, I know that's a, a concern of the city, and we talked about the elimination plan in that it's quite possible that depending on some of the projects that we come across, especially on the city side, there might be the need for funding, whether it's PFA or grants that are out there, rural water type grants. I, I'm not sure what there would be available for different projects. I think it depends on the project. But when I spoke with the MPCA about that, um, because I know one of Ken's concerns was what happens if we put our name on the list for a PFA loan, but we can't get it because we're not high enough on the ranking system. The MPCA takes that into account and says, we see that you're that you are applying for this, you didn't get it on this round, you do have it in your elimination plan that you're going to do this, you can apply for um, an extension <coughs> and they'll work with you if funding is the but, issue. But that would be the entities doing that, that would not be North Cooch, right? For the I&I &I mitigation plan. Well, we have work ahead of us too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're all in this together and we all do have projects that we're going to need to undertake and Regardless of which group it is, there's funding concerns. These projects aren't cheap, unfortunately. In my opinion, their timelines are way off. I mean, and then looking at this, um, we signed this schedule of compliance, and it's like you got 90 days to get your paperwork to work. And the MPCA That is ridiculous when you have engineers involved. The MPCA's response is, is you've had two years to work on it. Yeah. Uh, there might be a political component to this too. Well, keep in mind, like, <coughs> Ken and I looked at some of these, and if you look at the first couple, um, the 90-day ones, that work is pretty much all done or can be done rather quickly. I mean, one of the biggest ones, if you look at one of them um, on page four, the one that's marked number one and then um, four, Roman, excuse me, Roman numeral four, maps of all water, sanitary watersheds, that's probably one of the biggest tasks in the first few sections that we have to do. And all those maps are hanging on the wall. They're done. It's one of the first ones that take time and expense. And they're all done for each of the entities. So when you actually go through these, I think we need to take a look at not necessarily what the timelines are, but the timelines in association with what's actually listed as tasks here. Because a number of these tasks are done, or as I said, can be done readily. In many instances, they don't cost much either. You know, descriptions of control mechanisms, i.e. ordinances or regulations available to each government unit, the purpose of which is to prevent clearer water inflow. Okay, entities, what ordinances or regulations do you have in place that says you really shouldn't have your sump pumps hooked up to the sanitary sewer? I know International Falls has them because I've read them in their charter. I'm not sure about Rainier, and I think East Cooch has them and has actually done work in the past. That's an easy one. It's going to take a couple hours to find them, make copies, whatever, but that's done. 
The next one here is copies. So we just did that one. The next one is history of enforcement. I don't know for sure, but in the past five years, I'm pretty sure that nobody in this area has received a fine for having their sump pump hooked up to the sanitary. So that one's easy. None. The next one is the maps. The next one after that is a summary of, of dry and wet weather wastewater flow in the past five years. Well, if each of the entities don't have that, I do. I have 20 some odd years of monthly flow for each entity. So that section's done. I mean, in there is the I&I &I agreement that all that stuff is built into. Each of the entities has already seen a draft I&I &I agreement. We saw it last December. David Oberstar created it and presented it to each of the entities when we met in Rainier last year. Further, that I&I &I agreement is basically the schedule of compliance just put into a contract form. So that contract would be between each of the entities and North Cooch. Uh, Rainier and East Cooch have already said that they're okay with the schedule of compliance, which means to me that they're probably going to be pretty okay with the INI agreement. International Falls has gone through the schedule of compliance with a fine tooth comb. I'm hoping at this point they're satisfied with what's in the schedule of compliance, which means that they would be satisfied then with the INI agreement. I don't know where they're at on that, but that's my assumption. So there's the first section completely done. When you break it down by tasks, we've done a lot of this work. So the assessment what? plans, Rainier and East Cooch both have draft ones. International <coughs> Falls has done a lot of the work on the assessment plan. I'm not sure if they have a formal one in place, but they've done some of that work with the flow monitoring and televising. So what are, if any, is the uh, roadblocks to the 90 days? Is there any ones, any that might be difficult to meet, or are they all? The ones that you just mentioned. Um, you know, the first one, if you look at part on the bottom of page three, part five, A one, um, the majority of those are for North Cooch. And the ones that I see as stumbling points there would be the creation of ordinances and to get them passed by this board. Okay. Frankly speaking, that's the biggest one there. We just talked about the next one. And then we start getting into Assessment plans, which I said, these Cooch and Rainier have completed. They have draft versions of those already. I know I, or International Falls has started down the path of an assessment plan. I, I said, I don't know where they're at, which dovetails into the, the elimination plan. So uh, that's waiting for our approval. Yeah. Um, North Cooch, their requirement is 150 days that we would submit to them, to the MPCA. Um, basically our hydraulic report. Well, we've talked about that earlier. We have a hydraulic report done. Are we happy with it? Maybe we need to tweak it, but we're done. That's the A2S? Yes. And you said, well, maybe that's a good report to send to them and they can figure it all out. <laughs> we still want to put our best foot forward, Steve, but I, I, the box is checked, that portion is done. I mean, there's a few other things built into that, but that's the majority of that. Well, Mr. Chairman, I agree with uh, Commissioner Blair that the dates in here are unrealistic, and um, I think that the courts would be much fairer than what the NPCA has been. And so, if they've got a they've got a new plan coming in January, I guess I'd like to see it. We should call for a vote and just see what happens. And if it doesn't pass, then it goes to the courts. Well, I'm, I'm surprised that this consultant is going to charge us to come up and give us, summarize their findings. I'm, I'm shocked because if they were hired to do this job, they have to. I was shocked at the price. When he texted me that, I wanted to send back a laughing emoji, but I didn't think that would be professional. Hey, anybody else have anything on that? No motions or anything. We'll, if not, we'll move to the chairs. So, what are we doing? Are we tabling this again? Are we I, taking I, I a vote? I don't or? know how everybody feels about it. Someone would have to make a motion. That's yeah. yeah. Um, 
after we talk at the next once, once we sign this, then the ball is rolling. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, uh, if they were going to get another report in January, I think that should be sufficient grounds to the MPCA that that's why we're not eager to sign this at this point. Are we going to get another report from them in January? From who? From well, AE2S? Well, if you want to pay another 15 grand. I am. Uh, I think they're refer oh. referring to uh, MPCA. Isn't that what you're referring to about next month? Or? Yeah. Yeah. It's not. I mean, we don't know. How, has A2S been talking to MPCA? No. No. He doesn't talk to me. Uh, I think we got to look at relook at air engineering. I tell you the truth, but that's that's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. I mean. So the only thing we have left here, it sounds like to me, is do we want to give a clear message to the MPCA that we aren't going to pass this or just leave yeah, it and I, let, I, them I come, know. let them come to that conclusion by our lack of action? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Right, right, right. I mean, this is a big, big deal. Yeah. So what we're going to do is the stakeholders then? It's a big deal because there's a lot of money involved in all of this. Yeah, oh yeah. More and than people. A lot of money has been spent. More than already. people realize. That's right. Yeah. And I agree and with your earlier statement, Commissioner Bergman, that it's going to take a lot of little things to get this thing done. It isn't going to be just one thing. Yeah. And that's why I'd like to spend more time on the pumps and the pipeline and, and hopefully reduce, I don't know how many discharges that we've had in the past two years. It's been dry the past two years, so we haven't had any. We haven't had any. We've been close once or twice. Very close once. But if we had larger pumps and different pipelines, we might not even be close. So that's just, a, that's just an opinion. I would probably agree with you in the past two years, just because of the fact that we've been able to hold off discharging. OK. Would a motion be in order to send a letter back to MPCA asking for more time? It doesn't hurt. We could. I wouldn't. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. How? Well, how do they expect us to fix the problem? I mean, we don't have any room over here for any more expansions. We just went through that. So our plant is confined to what infrastructure we have now so the solution is to fix I and I well if there's leaky pipes if there's leaky laterals if there's problems with you want to dig up the whole town well no that's not required don't say that because I could very well be the yeah. well not to dig up the whole town but there's ways yeah. you don't necessarily have to go excavate pipes you can line them you can in situ form them we know for instance Maybe. that there's one leaking stamper is one of the sources of sump pump. They have sump pump problems. Yeah. I can tell you that when it rains in Grand Rapids, their pump or their plant doesn't know that it's raining unless they look out the window. Their flows hardly change. So what did what and what did they do to the they got how did they I don't know the answer to why. I just know that that's the case. I don't think the age of their dwellings are any. But they don't know more than our Rapids has got city sewer either. I don't know. I would think yeah. they would. Huh? Why wouldn't they? Because they don't. Oh. Well, they have a large uh, waste. Well, I just talked to a couple that bought a house in Grand Rapids that has got a well and a septic system and it's inside the city limits. What would, it, what would it take to have uh, MPC come up here and talk to the board at their next meeting and tell us what they think we need to do? They won't talk to the entire board. Why? Oh, because it's a yeah. violation of the meeting. Oh. How about? Yeah. <clears throat> what they'll tell you is, is you need to sign the schedule of compliance and then have your engineers tell you where your problems are. That's the point of doing the assessment plan. I'd like to. I'd like to slow this thing way, way down. I don't think we're going to go much slower. I, I, no. Yeah. Well, 
I mean, we've promised before in the past. Oh yeah, we'll take care of it. You know, that's it's been. This has been going on since back in the 80s. So where are we at? Are we going to table? Should we just table this? Uh, it's been tabled before. So if it isn't nothing done, it just stays tabled. Is that correct? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, if I may just say a few words. Um, I appreciate, I just want to say I appreciate the time that Cindy spent um, visiting with me this week on, on the uh, schedule of compliance and the things that um, uh, were important to the city and our concerns with needing flexibility in the timelines and, and not only the financial obligations that we have to the sewer district but to our citizens to do other projects that we have upcoming with. One example would be MnDOT's project in Highway 53. There's a significant local share that we have to pay for that. So, so we have some concerns. I personally have some concerns about how we're going to manage our finances to do those projects and at the same time move forward with some of the things that are going to be necessary in this schedule of compliance. Uh, but we had a good conversation, and I know that from her standpoint and her conversations with the MPCA, it's really important that the MPCA sees some kind of a signed document from North Cooch as the regulated party and needs to see it, what she's saying, it by January. Now, after listening to this conversation that you as a board have had for, you know, an hour or so, it seems to me that you have some uncertainty and some unanswered questions from your engineer, AE2S, and and I might just suggest that maybe it would make sense to uh, schedule a meeting where AE2S can be here and have um, present their information to you, answer your questions, so that you have some comfort level about what you need to do and what you've asked for from your engineers as it regards to the current state of the plant and the collection system and avoiding bypasses before you schedule sign the schedule of compliance. But that could be done in early January and. And then, if you're more comfortable at that point, something could be uh, revised and sent to the MPCA in, in January. Okay. And that might be a, one option for an approach that you could take if you're not comfortable signing the schedule of compliance now, which I know your staff is encouraging you to do. Um, you know, I think that schedule of compliance is kind of boilerplate for any place. I, I don't think that. You know, it fits with us. I would like to see, okay, we'll do some of this. We'll guarantee we do something bond, uh, bond for it or whatever. And uh, I'm talking about the entities. And just try to slow down. Take a little portion of, at a time. And don't, none of this 90 and 60 days. That's way too fast, that stuff. Well, I just want to make sure that the board understands. And this is a conversation that Ken and I had as well that what we're putting forth as in the schedule of compliance is a plan. They're not saying you're going to execute everything in the next year. I know from talking with different engineers that I think it was the city of Virginia when they were, had a situation similar to this, their elimination plan was stretched out over 10 years. They're not saying you need to fix all of this now. They're saying we understand that there's a lot of financial burden that comes along with this but we need to have a plan in place to address this. So the schedule of compliance isn't, isn't committing, isn't requiring executable actions within these time frames. It's the creation of plans that say, this is what we're going to do in this time frame to achieve these goals. Well, the timelines plan, are threatening though to me. Well, it is what it is, Steve. All I know is it, this is what the MPCA is putting for. If we don't go with this one, then the courts are going to tell us what we're going to do. And chances are it's, it's according to their timelines. And it's probably by all indications that I've had from talking with the MPCA and from Overstar, might not be as generous with, generous with the courts. And when was our first one issued? And I think maybe it might be the opposite. Right? December 26th. We might do better with the courts. Than so Ken's suggestion of uh, having uh, the firm come up and talk to us, is that we haven't had much sex success with them in the past? Is, is that it be correct? Or maybe it's a good idea to come up and talk to us again? I think 
not for five thousand dollars is it worth him coming but i think if you guys have uncertainties about that report i definitely think at some point he does need to present that report to the board mm -hmm. to be able to answer for it um, i would also include our operators there as well so that they could ask the technical questions um, but that doesn't necessarily have to happen independent of the schedule of compliance that can happen at the same time i understand the intent to slow everything down a little bit but i'm saying that the mpca's response would be you could still sign the schedule of compliance and do that well at kent's point they're going to be redoing highway 53 there's going to be a lot of infrastructure included with that project i imagine so there'll be new <coughs> piping and um that might show some improvements with our flows i don't know I don't know how resurfacing a road or widening it or improve piping that's eight feet down. Um, but so, do we, is there a, any uh, anybody in favor of having them come up and talk to us? Yes, because we can vote on that and have them come up. Because we're really just spinning our wheels right now. I don't know if we need to spin it until noon or anything, but mm -hmm. if we don't have them come up and talk to we, I mean, we're just going to sit here. Yeah. Do nothing in which we're doing yeah. right now. <laughs> so can we get a motion by from somebody to How much for how much for a meeting? For a face to face he quoted me forty five hundred to five thousand. He did tell me that maybe it was a little How many heavy. how many people is this? <laughs> it's just one. He's coming from I, I think he's out of state. Oh he must be a smart guy, huh? <laughs> yeah, this is not right. I mean I can try to squeeze him on the price. I mean you know, realistically, even if you look at his hourly rate, which is probably probably in the neighborhood of 150 bucks yeah. an hour, yeah. you know, from St. Cloud, it's a 10, maybe 12 hour drive if he factors in stops. So they were looking at 1500 ish there. Um, we'll pay for his hotel room. <laughs> he can have a little bit of uh, prep time, but basically that five grand works out at 150 bucks an hour to 33 hours of his time. He must be a slow typer. I would think that prep time should be done on what we've already paid him for. He should have all that in line. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the question is, do we want to do this? I guess the cost at five thousand dollars, whether we feel it's worth it or not. Well, so that's in face to face. Like I said, you could do a conference call, or he suggested a video conference too. That's not with our setup. That I don't know that that's going to be super convenient, but. I think if he comes up and brings his paperwork with him, it would work a lot better than on a conference call. Yeah. Yeah. We should own the study paperwork, the latest stuff that's been done, right? We should own it. Yeah, we paid for it. Do we have any motion for that? I'll make a motion we have uh, S, what is it, FC? AE2S. Yeah, come up and, and give us. Uh, have a meeting with them and, and let the board or, uh, or uh, committee meet with him and just see where we're at. I mean, I just don't think a video or a conference call or any of that is the answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we have a motion for Mr. Rudd. We have a second? I'll second for discussion. Second for discussion by Mr. Briggs. Um, what are we going to gain from him? I mean, what is it that, that he's going to tell us is going to yay or nay to schedule compliant. That's what I'm trying to understand is, you know, if we've got a problem with timelines, is he the guy that that's going to be able to help us saying, well, 90 days isn't realistic, you need 180 days you know, to get a report together or whatever. I don't know that. You don't think you will see You're going to spend $5,000 and is it going to change anything so far as yay or nay? Yeah. That, There's know. nothing that he's going to be able to tell us that's going to change anything in the schedule of compliance. And you don't believe that he's going to give us any suggestions that will help us? I, I'm not going to say that. I, I, I don't know either. That's why I made the motion. And I mean, I don't have a problem with uh, voting it down. I just want to... I mean, the only thing I see him being able to do as an engineer would be is we've got 90 days to get a report together to give the MPCA with timelines. Yeah. Well... That's not really going to help 
yay or nay here. It's, it's a matter of once we do this, is the engineer's report is going to say, okay. Uh, here's your follow-up. Here, he's got 90 days or, or somebody's got 90 days for us to come up with our, our plan of what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And that plan is going to say, well, to do this it might take six months, and to do this it's going to take ten years yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Well, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, from, from the aspect of, of uh, looking at larger pumps, uh, looking at a new EQ basin, looking at larger pipelines, I think we need to have that discussion with the engineer. They've done this report. Um, we have to sit down and, and understand from them uh, how much time they would see needing to, to put that together to uh, get to the MPCA. So I think the timeline, it would help the timeline to some degree. Maybe just one piece of it. The MPCA is not changing any of those timelines. Well, there'll be a new commissioner coming in January too, so be, there's a lot of change coming. So if we do have them come up, can we ask them what we want them to propose to us or what their suggestions are? I, you know, I mean, if you want to have a face to face meeting with him or any type of meeting, I don't think that's a bad thing to go over that report so that he can answer any of your questions that you have or your concerns. I don't think that's a bad thing. I'm just to Brian's point that isn't going to change anything in the schedule of compliance. Is it worth the 5000 or 4500 is the question. I think there is value in him presenting to the board whatever means you guys find appropriate, whether it's face-to-face -face or conference call or, like I said, as he suggested, video chat. Um, there's value there, but it's, it's independent of the schedule of compliance. I would, I would also yeah. like to have city staff there to be, uh, to be able to uh, hear that, that be presentation. It's a North Cooch matter. It's not a city matter. Mm -hmm. well, I guess I got to kind of disagree with that because we, the citizens of International Falls, are paying the bulk of the bill, and if we have our people there, I mean, because they're going to maybe there's some of the work that our city can do themselves without having to hire at all. Anything that would be done as a result of this engineer's report would be done independent of city resources. It would all be done on North Cooch property. Have they, in their report, have they given an opinion on whether our plan is actually designed for three million dollar, three million gallons a day? Is it capable of handling three million gallons a day? Three million, yes. But is that so to be clear, the plant? So be, to be clear, there's three ratings on a plant. There's a dry weather flow, there's a wet weather flow, and what's called a peak hourly. So they're they're disagreeing with what the peak hourly is. Our plant, according who's, who's disagreeing? A E two S. Okay. We believe, by according to our project, that we had a five million gallon peak hourly flow. And AE2S is saying that we're more in the four million. Four, yeah, we're a million lo lower than what our design flow. That's what they're saying. Because there are some bottlenecks in the plant. No, everything in the plant is evenly matched. They're just saying that it's evenly matched too low. There are no bottlenecks in the plant. There's not any areas of significant capacity or bottleneck. But they, but they don't tell us where, what, you know, what the, they don't specify. They just kind of basically said that the entire yeah. plant is about 20% less than it should be on peak hourly. Well, I mean, I'd like to know how they came up with the numbers. And I do take a little bit of exception with that because I think we've talked about this a little bit with the guys and we feel that we can hit 5 million. We're pretty sure that we've done it before. You can't do it for a sustained length of time, and you can't have the design settling in the clarifier or what have you when you're pushing excess capacity like that through. But when you're just trying to get flow through, you really don't care how your clarifier is settling. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Um, Mr. Briggs? This is to bring the guy up, right? Yeah. I, I would like to uh, have him provide a detailed expense report, you know, because where is he coming from? I think he's right around St. Cloud. I mean, he could fly up here in the morning and go back in the afternoon. Perfect. So 33 hours, you know, I mean, if you're going to bring this guy up here, you know, I, I'd say 10 hours would be, you know, yeah. at 150 bucks an hour, that's only 1500 bucks versus 4500 
And so I'd like to see that detailed out why it's that high. And I would intend, if we go forward with this, I'll squeeze him on that number. There's no way that that's a valid number. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but John, you know, these engineers, they like to sell their jobs, okay? Now what he mentioned is the pumps and the piping and all that stuff. Those are big capital jobs. Those are big money. Those are several million dollars. And they want to be the, I'm sure they would want to be the engineers on that job because they're, their fees are 10 percent, 15 percent, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just gotta like say, well, do you the really thing? trust the? You know, I, I don't. And I think you've mentioned it before, John. If we went forward with some of these projects, we'd probably get a peer review, or consider yeah. a peer review before we did some of them. Yeah. Mike, <laughs> if, if we if we do have him come up, I'd like to have make sure he's. You, whoever tells him what we want, the questions we're going to have, and we want the answers when he comes. Yeah. I mean, we just don't want him to come in here and then just start. We should have our questions presented to him before he gets here, so at least he can answer our questions that we have. Well, he's going to have a pretty good idea. Huh? Have, have a good, good idea of what right. we want to know. I can have a conversation in advance of that. Well, I, I find it odd that they didn't do any flow testing. That wasn't within the scope of the work. Wasn't that so they're using our meter flows. I mean, you mentioned that we get a heavy rain and our flows spike. Yeah. So that's an indication yeah, of rainwater entering the system. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to keep in mind that when he was doing this, I, he looked at EQ and he looked at the pipes coming out of EQ and then he would have looked at the plant. I think he looked at the ponds too. Mm -hmm. But the ponds are ponds. There's not a lot to them. We shouldn't be getting any rain. There's no flow coming from the ponds in the summertime. That's not true. Oh. We take flow from the ponds during the summer, but in rain events, we do shut the ponds off. Okay. So from the ponds to the EQ, where's all this additional flow coming into our system? And that's what International Falls flow study would, would have found. We didn't do a flow study on ours. <coughs> We were looking to the project was a hydraulic analysis of our system, of our plant. What, is there a lot of flow coming from the west in our heavy rain? Yep. And that's going right into the plant? Yep. So do you have, can you compare flows from the west in a dry period versus a wet period? And you have all those figures? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And they got those figures. I don't so, when he would have done the hydraulic analysis, more often than not, when he's looking at pumps, he's looking at what they're rated for. Or uh, whatever a unit operation is rated for. There's engineering calculations that would go into that. I don't know how much he actually looked at actual flows. He would have looked at more, from an engineering perspective, pump curves and, and what he could get through lines or head pressures and different things like that to be able to make those calculations as to what we can put through the plant. Any other discussion? If not, I call for a vote. I vote yes. 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 You're elected. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we've got to try to narrow it down what we got. Don? Okay, yes. Thank you. Yes and yes. Okay. So to be clear, this is a face-to-face -face meeting. We're going to try to get the cost down as much as we can and get a detailed cost statement. Sounds good. Okay. And you want right. full board for that? I or a think committee? So. Full. A full board, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. When, would it be at our next meeting? In the... I would call a special meeting for that yeah. one. Okay. okay. I'm good with that. Unless you want to stay here for a couple hours, Steve, uh, during a regular meeting. No. But I would like to see maybe if there's any, if the, if the city can send a representative, I would like to see one of some representative from the city, representation from the city. Why? I just think it's partially, if there's something the city can, I think it's the city's best interest of the people of International Falls to have represent other than North Gooch from the city itself. There's six representatives of you on the board. Yeah. But the city. public works is, I think they're a critical But component. the public works has nothing to do with the operation of our plant. 
Just so the, actually, the they have over the city last has years. <laughs> city has personnel that, that know the systems here and throughout the entire city better than anyone in this community. We're not talking about collection system here. We're talking about the operation of our plant. And public works people from the city have not set foot in our plant for years. So we've been cleaning our lines for years. <clears throat> well, they can come as a guest set. They can come and sit in the audience. It'll be an open meeting, so yeah. whoever wants there to come can come. Right. I'm done mm -hmm. with this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a public meeting. Okay. This wouldn't be part of the meeting itself. That's what you were asking. Okay. All right. Oh, shared services agreement. Um, this is one that, well, I'd like to see where the board is at on this one, but I would like to get David Overstar on the phone for this, if we have any conversation. I didn't receive any questions or comments on this, so I don't know where the board is at on this, but I did ask Mr. Overstar to be, a, a, be available for any discussion that we want on this since he created the document and we'll be able to answer the questions. Is the City of International Falls willing to sign off on this? They haven't seen it officially. They have not seen it officially? Nope. I was waiting for comments from the board on this one before we presented anything to them. I wanted to make sure that the board was comfortable with the document before we started anything. I would so move that this board approve the shared service agreement between the City of International Falls and the North Cooch Area Sanitary District. First, we have a... We have a second. We have a second on that motion. I, I will second for discussion. Um, okay. Mr. Chair, I don't, are we doing it backwards? I mean, should no. the city approve this first? We approved it, then this is going to be submitted to the City of International Falls, and if they say no, then it's done with. It's yeah. Canceled. If yeah. they accept it, they sign it, and it's done. And this is a different than the other other one that has been floated around previously, or this, has this changed? This is the exact same one that you saw for the first time last month. Right. There's been um, really no changes to it. The only thing I, you know, and, and maybe it's a, the lawyers like doing that, but I, there's timelines in here. And I, you know, after that I and I thing, I hate this 30 day, 60 day crap that's in all these contracts. I mean, I don't know, that scares me. I will point out that there's no specifics on payment in here. I left that for discussion with the board. Well, this mayor isn't going to sign it. I'll give it to you that. What would you do as a board member? Okay. What are your issues with it? Where can we start? We'll, we have we'll, to begin conversation somewhere. I think you're going at it backwards. So how would, what's your proposal then? It would come later after we've had uh, agreements on schedule of compliance and other items. This has nothing to do with the schedule of compliance. This is about ownership of the line. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily about the ownership. It's got to do with us getting agreement to help them pay for cleaning. It's about the ownership in that in the ownership resolution that we passed a couple months ago, we indicated that we'd be providing a shared services agreement. This is the shared services agreement as a result of that follow-up, or as follow-up for for uh, that resolution of ownership. Because right now we've claimed that we own the line, but we'll let International Falls take care of it, but we don't have any means to go about the practicality of how that works. That's what this does. Has somebody mm -hmm. made a motion to approve this? Yeah, I did. Motion and a second. I oh, second. Motion. Motion. Okay, yeah. sorry, I was looking through my paper, shuffling papers. <laughs> Can't we handle it on a case by case? Do we have to have an agreement drawn up? I mean, sure, the line's going to have to be clean. If the city does them, they can send us a bill. Well, I guess that's the point. We have to have an agreement that that's what we'll do. 
And it's not just cleaning, it's cleaning, it's maintenance, it's whatever else we deem has to be done. And if we don't, so we could just not do anything. Yet. It's just that we're kind of on what we'd say we'd help the city pay for it. But if the city doesn't want us to help pay for it, then I guess we won't do it. So we can... Uh, we're just still kind of in this weird position that we were in before, where for 35 years we've owned the line, the city's done the work. We just need some clear-cut understanding as to how that relationship is going to work. Okay, yeah, years from now, somebody's going to look at that and say, what the hell is that? What's that all about? Kind of the way we did it for yeah. 35 years. Any other discussion? If not, I ask for a vote. Mike? To share this agreement, is that we're voting on? Yeah. Well, That's just, what? No. Okay. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. No. Okay, then where do you want me to go with this? Oh, wait and see. Just leave it. Okay, so who voted? Okay, so no was Rudd. Briggs. Briggs. Blair. Blair. Bob and, and myself. Bob and myself. So just I think Bob had a good point. Let's go through the schedule of compliance one thing at a time and this will get worked out. I mean that it's not gonna change anything. They can study it a little more and they can come up with some maybe different language. I don't know. But they haven't seen it yet. No, also but that's the thing, they haven't seen it. So the first time that the city does maintenance on that line, are they gonna bill us for the whole thing? Why would we approve it? Without right. any input from okay, the city. we've already done that, so let's move on to operator's report. Yes, Bob. Point of order, under old business, could, could we have an update on the accident the employee had where he lost part of his finger? And have we corrected the dumpster situation? Um, I just feel very uncomfortable if we have employees getting injured and uh, we don't have an update on that. Is there anything new you want to bring up this? At the last meeting, we reported that we put fixes into place to take care of it. Uh, they seem to be yep. working. We put, well, we put the shackles and stuff on the dumpsters, yep. so we don't have to touch the cable now. They're completely hands-off now. The employee's back to work. Uh, he's doing well. Um, I guess I just have one question on the dumpster. Why do we own the dumpster? Why, why don't we just get one from... Uh, Friends, and this way here, we're not hooking up and emptying it. There were special dumpsters that were made for the plant. They did. Yeah. For the sewer district. Oh, okay. Fit it's not a regular dumpster. For the dump, for the bar screen, the grid collector, and, and we also have one at the EQ. There's two dumpsters down there to fit that bar screen down there. These are special dumpsters that were built just for those machines. Oh, okay. Did it go up into the snail? Yeah, it is. Basically, his nail is entirely gone. Oh. They took the nail bed and everything. It's gone? The whole thing's gone? Yep. Like, basically, I guess, to the first knuckle of his finger. Yeah. Mm. Little fingerprints or anything like that. No, that was one of his concerns. He didn't know how he was going to unlock his phone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Operator's report. All right, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, uh, the last meeting, I told you how important it was for us to get this biosolids out. Uh, we did complete that. The week of the 26th, we had Mountain here. It took about four days to get all the biosolids hauled up to the field. We got the tank emptied, everything's washed down, and all the lines are drained in the tank. And uh, we're ready to go through the rest of the winter with nothing in that storage tank out there. So we did end up getting all the biosolids out. Uh, we're kind of limited where we could go because of frozen ground, you're only allowed up to 2% uh, slope on the land that you can haul on. We had enough acreage out there on the truck road at Tyler Davis's to haul all our solids. We hauled about 322,000 gallons of sludge out. Also, the, when Paul came up that first morning when they started hauling, and he brought the annual report with them, and we reviewed it together, went through it, and we both signed off on it. And that's due to the MPCA by December 31st, which they hand delivered that already. So that's been delivered to the MPCA all right, biosolids and report. That would be last year's cropping year, not the stuff we hauled this year, but last year's cropping year and the report was delivered, which is due December 31st. So we did, uh, we made out pretty good there. Like I say, we got all the tanks 
the tank cleaned out and stuff. We also inspected the anode packs in the tank, and they seem to be fine yet. We talked about that a couple of years ago, that we may have to replace them, and uh, we've been inspecting them every year that we take it down and wash it. And we did have a price on them. It was like $1,700 for the anode packs that are in the tank, bolted in the floor. But they still look fine, so we should be able to go through another year with them. And each year as we take it down and wash it out, we'll inspect them, and when it's time to replace them, we'll bring that up. Oh, great. What do they do? Well, it's just for electrolysis. Oh. With concrete and stuff. Uh, wires. Like yeah, just, you know, the concrete floor. And also, I talked about that pump, number one pump at EQ. We put that control, that cassette board in there. We ran that pump for a week and it never tripped out, so we did solve that problem. And that Milky Electric was right on that, that, that he predicted was the problem with the drive. So we did, we ran it for about a week, and then we took that pump out of service, and we got that number one pump down to Getch, WW Getch, who, uh, is putting the seal in there at no charge that was leaking because that was the one that was fixed. Mm -hmm. That pump is fixed, ready to be get back here and put in. Like I say, we got that down there. The motor and stuff is all blocked up down at the EQ in the basement on blocking. We still would like to do that number three pump, and that, which needs seals, maybe bearings. We don't know until we get into it. And they got the special tools at the shop and stuff to do that. So we. When we get this one back, it'd be nice to get that other one down there, and then we, you know, we can go into spring and summer with all three pumps in good shape. So, we, like I say, we'd like to get that one done also. But once we get, Greg, where, where's their shop at? It's just south of Bemidji. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you guys haul it down. We hauled it down. Uh, also. That week there was pretty busy around here. I'm sure if you came by, you've seen all the trucks coming and going. We also had a, a Wayne transport truck bring us a load of ferric. And uh, we usually had that come from Chemtrade. But this last load came through, came from Wayne transport because our supplier, Hawkins, had another distributor they bought from. And uh, actually he said it was gonna be about a $300 savings to us by them buying this last load of ferric to another company. But now they got into a match back and forth and he just told us the other day that they're going back to Chemtrade. But, and, cause they uh, agreed to match the price. So, you know, our, our loads are about over $9,000. When we first started here, we were buying from a company where, from D, this DPC and uh, they were like, 22 cents a pound. We haul about, we get about 48,000 pounds. So, by going with this other company, it's about a thousand dollar savings. But like you said, this last load, now you're probably going to see close to a 300 dollar savings, and they're going to match that. So we're going. I guess we're going back to Chemtrade. That's that's their deal. Uh, also, the, the lab certification fee that you see there for 1,500 dollars. That's a yearly thing that we do. And uh, that's to say compliant with our lab certification. That was due November 30th. We submitted that on November 20th to the MPCA. And uh, Jennifer Thorson, who is our coordinator, she said everything was complete and that looked good. Um, I can also, I'd like to just inform you that the effluent lift station down there is still running real good. We're not having any other issues with that. The river's still at an elevation that we have to run that yet. We monitor that every other day. We'll go online and look and see what the river elevation is. And, and uh, when it gets to a certain elevation, we're able to turn that effluent lift station off. We're just not there yet. So we still, like I say, we're still running the effluent lift station because of the river elevation. Uh, our, this past month, we did meet all our effluent requirements. In uh, our phosphorus, you know, we're, our limit is one milligram per liter, and we average for the month 0.93. We had one come in that was a little high, so we called them and told them to rerun that, and they reran it, and it still came back at the same, a little bit high on us on our one of our weekly tests. But we're still meeting our uh, 
monthly average of one milligram per liter. We came in at 0.93. So we met it there. Our mercury also is came in at 3.6. We're allowed up to 6.9. So we're meeting our standards real well. And the, like I say, the plant's doing real well as far as that, meaning removal efficiencies and our phosphorus and mercury removal and our BODs and TSS and stuff. We're doing real well with that. So like I say, we're, we're doing real well as far as meeting our Mr. Chair, me, Greg. Um, and I would think that this dry weather would affect those uh, calculations because in wetter weather it's going to be diluted more, and yep. your your uh, figures should be should well, be actually, that somehow. Huh? R right now you're getting stronger effluent because there's no clean yeah, water mixed with it. Right, it's not diluted. But we're actually we monitor that. We do in-house phos tests. Is that very expensive? So we do in-house phosphorus testing about three times a week, and we'll run, you know, we'll regulate that feed rate up and down to what we feel we need to do to meet that limit. See, we can't use the in-house for reporting purposes to the MPCA. That's coming from Pace. But we, what we've known in the past, what we've seen in the past is when we run an in-house. Our in-house is always a little higher than what we get from them. So if we're running a 0 .7, 0 .8 in-house, we know we're gonna be in there with uh, with pace. So and then we're, right now I think we have, yesterday we used 25 gallons of ferric. First times we're using 50, 75. I was 75. going somewhere with that, but huh? it, I, don't, I was going somewhere with that, but I guess it's too, it's, you know, this I and I thing has just got me, thinking too much, I think. Yeah, okay. I think when you have a lot of clean water coming in, we shouldn't have to treat any of our effluent, but whatever. Right. It should be diluted to... Dilution, drink solution water. to pollution. <laughs> the way it sounds, we're getting just pure drinking water into our system. But. And also there's... Try it. Yeah, you take that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You no, know, there's also some lift station stuff up the lake that we're still trying to get done at times. You know, we get a nice day, we'll go up, pull a couple pumps, and, and check them and stuff. This is out in East Cooch, though, that we need to stay on top of, too. So we get a nice afternoon or something, the weather's decent, we'll, we take on some of that yet, too. And that's what all I have to say. Did the, did the farmers get paid for dumping that bio sled down in their field? No. They, they volunteer to do it. Wow. There's a benefit. It's free for it's a benefit. Free yeah. fertilizer. Yeah. Have you ever seen the picture, Steve, where they show like two fields like on either Green. side of a driveway yeah. or something, and one is just covered in weeds, and the other one just looks immaculate. Mm -hmm. It's the one with the, the weeds that they put the biosolids on. Makes well, a little difference. Double the yield of hay just for yeah. Cushing yeah. County, which is clay soil, and so we're pumping yeah. sludge into that tank now. No. No, we're going into, we're going to go through the rest of the winter with no sludge in that big storage tank. We got otherwise you'd have to run that big motor, that mixer and stuff all winter long, so it won't freeze on you. So we that's why we wanted to get that out, and we just so dropped wet all fall we couldn't do it until the ground froze. But then on frozen ground, you're limited to where you can go. There's rules that apply to hauling on frozen ground. You can't haul on anything over two percent slope. So we ended up having a spot out there and enough acreage, he had 20 acres that was within that limit that we were able to haul on. You never got stuck? Nope. Once. Well, he broke through or something. But he broke through a little bit one yeah. day, but otherwise it went pretty good. Good. Well, thank you, Greg. Yep. Director's report. Sure. Oh, well, yes. Um, I would make a motion to authorize uh, operations upon the return of the pump to have the number three pump rebuilt and prepared uh, for the spring runoff. I'll second that. And the last time we had that one, the one we're done, just seals and labor was like, I think twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. And then in the one that they had to put the bearings in, we asked them, we confirmed that price, that was about $2,400. Oh, okay. they, but they said they've got all the parts there. Good. So if it needs it, they got them. All right. Did you say pump number three? Number three, to be then rebuilt. Based yeah. on the timeline from operations. And put back into operation. Well, we like it all seconded. I think it's right. You got 30. 30? 
All right. Any no other discussion? We got a vote. Yes. 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 All right. Thank you, Greg. Director's report. We talked about everything already, uh, I think. Um, the only thing else that's outstanding is the East Cooch hours, which you get every month in, in your packet. Uh, low hours this month. Uh, so far, so good. Everything's been going pretty well with the view, so there haven't been a lot of call outs for that. Basically, the hours are either jackfish or training with I view. So. Okay. What funds to be transferred for October close? Thirteen thousand six hundred and forty-six. Oh yeah, October, November flow. Sorry. November flows. Need a motion on that? No. No. That's just automatic. Okay. Okay. Make a motion to uh, close the meeting. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. All right. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. Yes. Yes.